Hey everybody, time for another video. As you can see, I've got an empty gearbox here, except for the reverse idler. I'll pop that out and check that for wear probably later, but otherwise, this thing's empty. So, I've got the rest of it on the bench. As you can see, and I will be preparing to do the third part of multi-power, how it works for you. Hopefully get that up um, next weekend and, uh, and finish that one off. But this is the um, counter shaft. And that's where the magic happens. Uh, and that's the um, main shaft output gears. But today, I want to get back onto the 165. I've got a heap of parts come in, including one of these, um, some brake parts, some electrical parts, and, uh, well, you name it, I've had parts. So all of that I'll be um, looking at over the next hour or so. And filming for you. Um, there's also the manifold heater for the 590 I want to do. I'm going to get the oils changed on the 590, get the filters changed, do a bit of maintenance on that and I'll, uh, I'll film some highlights of that for you as well. Uh, also got a correction from last week. Um, I described how um, the manifold heater from a 100 series works, not from a 500 series. It's this pretty much the same. The heater element works the same, um, and the excess fuel works the same. The only difference is that the 590 doesn't have a little reservoir like that. It's fed directly off the top of one of the fuel filters. Sorry, I've stopped by the fuel filter. So uh, that just relies on pump pressure to, uh, to feed um, excess fuel. Disadvantage with this system is that once the reservoir is empty, if the engine hasn't started, that's your it with the excess fuel. If you've got it off the top of the fuel filter, as you cramp, crank the engine, you'll continue to make more fuel available for excess fuel. Anyway, so, without further ado, let's get going. Okay, first things first. I wonder where that came from. I have seen that before. Oh well, I can use it. Right, first things first. That's better. So we got that finished with, let's get on and start having a look at this. Now, what I was saying a minute ago about the cold start is that you can see the pipe comes off it there, goes back along top of the manifold, comes down there to the top of the filter housing. So all the while the engine's turning, the pump's pumping fuel up into there and it will make um, fuel available to the cold start thing. It's very, very simple and I think, as I said earlier, the only thing that really ever goes wrong with it is the valve inside there. They tend to make them out, I mean, this, a lot of these modern aftermarket parts, they're made as cheaply as you can possibly do. and. Um, they don't always last that long. Right, next step is I want to have a look at the power steering filter. So for those of you who aren't familiar, and I'm sure there's somebody out there who's going to tell me I'm wrong as well, power steering pump, sorry, power steering reservoir. There's a filter inside there. There's the pump, which is dri driven off the um, crankshaft drive gears. Very, very simple little gear pump. 
um, and all it does is go up there. This is the low pressure side up there to the oil cooler and comes back there under the manifold and yes I know there's a nut missing off that stud. Um, the pressure side is here and that goes up to the orbital unit inside the dashboard and that's orbital not orbitrol. I don't care what anyone tells you that is orbital not orbitrol. And uh, that's where the steering happens. Okay, I won't go into any details, any more detail than that on the steering at the moment, but that's that's a topic for another day. So the first step, I'm going to rip the level plug off, have a look, see what's inside there. I'm not expecting to see anything at all, to be honest. Um, and once that's done, I'm going to undo that, and we'll have a look and see what condition the filter's in. Okay. Right, well, as predicted, I don't suppose you can see in there, but there's not a huge amount in there. Um, there should be enough to give a little bit of steering though, but with this correct use of the dipstick here, I'm not sure what that is in there. Can you focus? Yeah, see that's supposed to be Dexron, other ATFs are available, uh, but it looks more like a 32 spec hydraulic oil. Anyway, let's uh, get the thing apart and have a better look. Well, I don't know what kind of digestive problem that is, but it's not looking good. Anyway, looking at the filter, I've seen better days as well. I'm not quite sure what that is all hanging off the bottom there, but I wouldn't eat it. Anyway, just as a quick one, if you're ever doing one of these, get that O-ring as well, because that's one thing that always gets neglected. And you can see, like everything else, that one's seen better days. That filter looks like it's coming apart as well, so I will um, get that off, we'll have a look at that, and um, I'll get another one ordered. Well, pretty sure it's not supposed to look like that. And just to add to the fun, you can see that that end cap has come off, and there's the filter element inside. Um, yeah, that's definitely past it, so I'll be getting another one of them. Right, so on the shaft here, you've got that little seal. Focus, focus, thank you. That little nylon seal there. There's a little rubber thing which should come in the kit with the new pump and that spring. I have seen these without the spring in there, and um, guess what? It's not going to filter much without the spring. Okay, so I think we've um, done about as much as we can on this steering pump for now. I'll get some parts ordered and we'll pick this up in a week, I guess. Right, let's get this jacked up and see if we can see where things are going wrong. Oh, you see that? <laughs> that is going up, and that is staying where it is. Pretty sure it's not supposed to do that. Well, we were kind of expecting that that was going to be a problem anyway. Right, we've got front wheel off the ground. Well, part of that's the track rod end, but part of it is 
the pivot pins there. That rubber seal in there, I was surprised to find, still available from Agco. It's amazing how many of these parts are still available. Anyway, so that's another thing we need to have a look at. Um, probably not today, however, because I want to get back onto the 165 in a couple of minutes. I just wanted to see what I needed. What steering parts I need to order before I get on. Right, before we finish on the 590, the only other thing is I've got to order is the um, turbo oil filter. That is not the same as your normal engine. If I'm, my memory is correct, and I'm sure it isn't, that has got a 5 8 fitting um, screw thread on the top, 5 8 UNC. Um, as opposed to what the oil filter has. Anyway, so I'll be ordering one of those so we can get the rest of this done next week. Right, here we are back on the 165 again. Um, you can see I've got the new bearing race in there. Got the diff lock pedal working and installed. I broke one of those um, brake pivots off. I broke one, sorry, one of the ears off one of the brake pivots, putting it on. So that's a new secondhand one. New seal rubber in there. Um, and if anyone wonders, this is actually the diff lock. Um, that, whoops, that fits onto that shaft there. Just like a gear selector fork and then there's this little dog clutch that slides up and down the splines on the uh, half shaft and when you push the pedal down let's see if I can do this with one hand no I can't well right okay see that shaft as I push the pedal down you can see it slides out. Right, so when you press on the diff lock pedal, slides this selector over, that dog clutch there engages on the other half of the dog clutch there and locks the diff. And of course, when you dip the clutch, that's only held in, held in by the pressure the rotating pressure against the face of the dog clutch. As soon as you dip the clutch, drops the pressure off the uh, dog clutch and allows the return spring in there to pull the clutch apart again, releasing the diff. It's ever so simple. Um, not a lot ever goes wrong with them. Usually the only thing that goes wrong with these is this pedal sticks or this gets stuck in the borings in the casting there which is great until some fun sponge comes and uh, releases it for you saving you hours of enjoyment that you had planned but anyway this thing's pretty much ready to go back together just got to drive out one oil seal and drive the new one in and we'll be ready to put the final drive back on it and stick it back on there. Anyway, that's just about all uh, I've got time for today. Just going to drive that seal into there. Uh, and that keeps the um, oil in the final drive from draining back into the trumpet and contaminating the discs. Okay, well, thank you all for watching. Um, I promise you'll get your um, part three of multi-power next weekend. It's all on the bench there, so you can uh, see how it goes. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll get that out next week, but uh, 
Thank you all for watching and uh, see you then. Bye.